there'll be you know hundreds of millions of dollars required to continue the war in Ukraine. I think that's going to be a big challenge for her. And while most, I imagine most Brits support um, the campaign against to, to defend themselves, the Ukrainians against Vladimir Putin. When it comes to them not being subsidised or not subsidised sufficiently, I think it will really test the commitment, uh, Britain's resolve to support the Ukrainian defence. Now, Truss is also considering labelling China a threat to national security. That would put China in the same basket as Russia. What would that involve and what is likely to happen if she actually goes through with that? Well, I think that, that China would probably retaliate to that. Um, that is a harder position than Boris Johnson has engaged in. Boris Johnson has tried to keep a dialogue going with China. Liz Truss, as you say, has said that she will elevate China to an acute threat, that she will equate them with Russia, um, which the Chinese will obviously take offence at, given what the Russians are doing in Ukraine. So, in a way, this probably heralds um, an increased sort of battle between the UK and China, which could involve some sort of increase in trade sanctions and escalation uh, in trade disputes between the UK and China. Um, China has already signalled that they're quite hostile to some of Liz Truss's comments through the campaign. So she has said she will make China um, officially declare them an acute enemy, an acute threat. Now, Truss is also keen for an integrated review of the UK's defence and diplomacy as well. Does that include the AUKUS Security Pact and Australia's submarine deal? It does, and I think what it will do, I, I think that if Liz Truss can convince the Cabinet to increase defence spending to the 3% that she wants it to go to, I suspect a lot of that extra defence spending will be involved in the Indo-Pacific area. Um, in the region, with China, of course, being uh, the focus of that. Um, the British are already increasing their military presence through the Indo-Pacific, along with the United States and Australia. So I think there will be more funding and more support, which will further strengthen the AUKUS agreement in terms of its resources. Now, some have labelled Liz Truss Boris Johnson's continuity candidate. She served under him. She didn't stand down from Cabinet during his downfall. Is Johnson's legacy likely to linger over her now that she is Prime Minister? Ironically, Boris Johnson's greatest legacy was making Brexit happen um, after there'd been many false starts. Liz Truss, of course, is a Remainer, or was a Remainer. She opposed... Um, Brexit. But of course, um, more recently, she has swung in behind it. I suppose you could argue, well, at least she's showing loyalty, unlike some of the candidates who abandoned Boris Johnson, like Rishi Shunak, uh, abandoned Boris Johnson right at the last moment. Um, in a way, I suppose you could say that Liz Truss at least um, stayed loyal to the end, even though she didn't always agree with everything he said. But um, I was surprised tonight that she gave so much focus and uh, applause to Boris Johnson. And yet the person I think she really needs to win over uh, is Rishi Sunak and his supporters. Let's not forget he got 60,000 of the votes of the Conservative members. Liz Truss got about 85,000. He has a significant constituency. So to simply walk past him, to not even acknowledge him when she's been declared the victor, and then to give very, just in passing, she mentioned him on the stage, I don't think was a very smart political move. And just on that too, John, just uh, finally, there's still a commission happening into the Downing Street parties that, also, that contributed to Boris Johnson's downfall. And any punishment that's handed down to Johnson as a result will need another Tory party vote. So how is Liz Truss likely to handle this situation to either, you know, to try and unite the party while minimising damage to Boris Johnson? I think that from her demeanour over the last two months, her view will be to try to move on, to try to um, f draw a line between now and what has happened over the last few months in the UK. Uh, it has alienated a lot of the British public from the way that their politicians act. The appalling imagery of Boris Johnson and many of his staff partying while other Britons, other Brits could not visit their families or their parents who were dying or grandparents. 
I think Liz Truss will do everything she can now, uh, using all of her political skills to try to say to her colleagues in the Conservative Party, let's move on. The only winner of that, I think her view would be, is um, the Labor Party, Sir Keir Starmer, who at the moment um, is looking fairly strong in terms of popularity. John Lyons, we appreciate your analysis. Thank you very much.